Greetings and welcome to another edition of Montpelier Connection. I'm State Representative Mike Merwicky from the Wyndham 4 District of Putney, Dummerson, Westminster. And here we are in December, getting ready to head back to Montpelier in January. So today's a legislative preview show with our two guests, Senator Jeanette White and Representative David Dean. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, David chairs the, the Wet and Wild Committee <coughs> in the House. Fish, Fish, Wildlife, and Water Resources. And yep. mm -hmm. Jeanette chairs government... Government operations, and I also sit on judiciary. So mm -hmm. two committees in the Senate, because there's 150 of us uh, in the House, we only have one committee, and I sit on the House Human Services Committee. Well, some of us do have two. That, I'm on the House Rules Committee. That's right. Uh, yeah, there, yeah. Are, there are other committees that... We sit yeah. on, but you only have one standing right. committee. One standing right? yep. committee. I mean, one. Well, yeah. let's start right there. Well, How yeah. standing committee is, is a standing committee. Yeah. <laughs> but what, what do we do about, about that? What is, why is the, it important? Why do we need a rules committee? Um, our process, uh, the legislative process, is set out in a body of rules that, that spell out how a bill moves from one stage to another, how it moves from one body to the other, from the House to the Senate or vice versa. Um, and within that, um, there are smaller individual questions that have to be mm -hmm. answered, like can members of the House use laptops on the floor? And in the Senate, they cannot because the rules do not allow for it um, over my um, ongoing protestations, the House Rules Committee voted to allow the use of laptops uh, on the floor of the House, and now everybody uh, is online uh, while we are on the floor in debate. Except uh, when we are in a roll call vote. In a roll call, everything has to close down. All electronic devices have to close down. Mm -hmm. yep. It's sort of like taking off in an airplane. Yeah. You know, you've got to shut everything <laughs> off. Yep. <laughs> and we're not allowed. But Our rules that, don't. Yeah, that, and that, that's just one example. There are mm -hmm. other things. There never used to be a consent calendar so that each body had to individually take up every congratulatory resolution in the, in the course of business on the floor of the House mm -hmm. and the Senate. And in fact, it happened, you know, we would take it up in the House, pass it, we'd send it over to the Senate, they had to take it up and pass yeah. it. Now, if it's a uh, congratulatory um, uh, uh, resolution thanking someone for public service or whatever, it goes on what's called the consent calendar. And unless someone, mm -hmm. member of either body, objects, yeah. it passes. It stays on the calendar for two days and it passes. So it frees up, you know, work time. Um, for us as members of the legislature what, when we're on the floor. Yeah. And so actually, that's a, a couple of examples yeah. of we changed the rule. And this happened while I was serving on the Rules Committee. And there are actually four real kind of set of rules, right? There, the House has its rules. The Senate has its rules. It has joint rules. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> when that fails and we don't know what to do, we go to Masons. We go to Masons, mm -hmm. yep. yep. And many other meetings, uh, people are used to using... Um, um, Roberts. Roberts. Roberts Rules of Order. We use Mason's Rules of Order. Which are specifically designed for legislative for bodies. For legislative bodies, right. Right. In, you know, Roberts Rules of Order, you normally find yourself in a setting where there's a small group of people who are members, mm -hmm. and then it's to control those attending uh, so that there's a process to mm -hmm. deal with things yeah. for people who are not members of right. the, the group. Uh, in the legislature, we are members, mm -hmm. and so it, it, it requires a little bit different approach to rules. Well, one of the reasons I wanted to go there for <coughs> just a minute is that um, a, a lot of people talk to us about passing legislation and, and then get a little frustrated that it's not as easy as they might like it to be. Uh, mm -hmm. Our Constitution was set up, our legislature was set up to make it difficult. To, to enact a, a, a law or to change a law. Um, as I've been in the legislature, I think it's a good thing. I don't think we should surreptitiously be changing laws. So the, the process allows for as many people to be heard. And within that process, it's very, it's very organized with rules. And I, I think it, it serves us well. Uh, one of the things I would like to talk about looking ahead to the next legislative session is something we've done already, but we need to keep progressing with 
and, and that's health care, health reform, health insurance reform. Uh, we are on the road to a single payer system in 2017, but to get there right now, uh, we have to follow um, the ACA, the American Health Care mm -hmm. Act. Um, the federal law allows us to take this step right now to set up our health care exchange and to enact uh, health care as we see, see best in Vermont. Um, I think in Vermont we got off to a little bit of a rocky start, uh, similar to the, to the federal system. Uh, from what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing now, I think we're, we're making really good progress. The system's working better. Um, people are able to sign up. Uh, people are going to have coverage. Lots of times I'm hearing now from people who haven't had coverage for a long time that now will or understanding they're going to be able to, mm -hmm. to get coverage. What are you hearing from people? <clears throat> oh, pretty much the same thing. And, and I've had um, a number of people have contacted me with very specific problems. that uh, They went in and tried to register and they kept getting kicked out and kicked yeah. out. And then they were told they had to do it this way, but they didn't have enough information. I mean... <clears throat> all those horror stories. I mean, we're not hearing from the people for whom it's working. working yeah. Just like Act 250, we don't right. hear from the people that it works well for. Um, but what I've been doing is sending all those emails and those contacts right up to yep. to Robin. And I have to tell you, she, they're taking care of yeah, them. So yeah. when there are issues out there, I would encourage people to contact us because yeah. They are responsive, and they're they're trying to make this work. This is a huge undertaking, huge. And it was uh, had we tried this um, fifteen years ago, it would have been as huge an undertaking. But we would have been doing it all by paper, and, yep. and so we wouldn't have had these technological glitches yep. in the same way. Yep. <laughs> we would have had paper problems. <laughs> we would have had paper problems, know. but yeah. it this yeah. is such a big, big. It change. is huge. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, what I found, uh, not uh, no one's been in touch with me lately, but um, early on, referring people to the navigators, yeah. who mm -hmm. oh, yes. are well trained, know what they're doing, <coughs> and mm -hmm. they've been able to help people work through yeah. um, unusual circumstances. Right. And not just work through, but what I've found is that I've put some small business people in touch with yeah. them, who were saying, "Why would you ask this on the small business registration?" A place why and and they're taking those comments into consideration and they're actually making changes and yep. looking at it and saying oh yeah we see that from your perspective that right. that doesn't make sense so yeah. right. they really are ch um, yeah. responsive I think long term <clears throat> this is for the greater good mm -hmm. and that's what we were looking for uh, in in the long term I think it's going to save money I think it's going to improve people's quality of life because we're getting people uh, access to, to health care Mm -hmm. uh, much sooner than they would have otherwise. Um, and as we move towards uh, single payer, uh, universal care, um, I, I think the system will, will work even better. And what we have to remember is that the health care reform that we passed in Vermont a long time ago, I mean, now we're complying with the ACA. That's yeah. what the exchange is all about. But the reforms that we passed before, there's like, I don't even remember, I remember when Susan Basile was mm -hmm. hired to try and track all those changes and what were being made. And there were like 123 different things. And a, so a lot of those are behind yep. the scenes. I mean, people don't see them as yeah. part of the Health Care Act. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, um, do, you, uh, do you support Obamacare? Oh, no, I hate it. Do you support a national health Care Act. Oh yes, I think that's great. Yeah, right. <laughs> and and in Vermont, we have a lot. There are a lot of things beyond the exchange that yep. are happening. Oh, you bet. Like the blueprint. Yeah. Um, <coughs> if people have difficulties, uh, we're available, um, and we'll play our contact information uh, mm -hmm. as as the show goes on. Feel free to get in touch with us. We can put you in contact with people who. Uh, who can open doors that might seem closed to you. And, and it's one of the things where the system, I think, has been working. The navigators have been mm -hmm. doing incredible work to, to get people hooked up, to, mm -hmm. to keep, to be persistent and patient <coughs> with the system. Uh, and we can connect you with navigators. We can get you, uh, as you said, Robin Lunge, who's a Brattleboro native mm -hmm. and heading up the, the governor's Guilford, office. actually. Oh, Guilford. Mm -hmm. But she went to Brattleboro High yeah, School, Yeah, she right? did. Yeah. yeah. 
doing some great work uh, and, and really uh, at the advanced guard of, of, of reform in, in mm -hmm. the United States. And yeah. I think a lot of uh, other places are looking at what we're doing here in Vermont. So if you are having trouble, feel free to get in touch with any of us or if you uh, have contact information for your own uh, legislator, uh, that's why we're here. Um, David, yes, sir. last year you tried <coughs> to do something pretty big in your committee <laughs> and uh, it ran into, um, it slowed down a little bit and yeah. uh, the result of last session was that you got to go on a, a listening tour this summer in regards to the shoreland development or, yeah. or I should say protection. The shoreland protection shoreland bill protection. That, that we passed. Can you give us a little nutshell of what, you were tr what you're trying to do and, and where it's at right now? Well, uh, first off, we're trying to build a higher comfort level in the Senate in terms of what the bill does or doesn't do. Um, we, uh, in terms of the process, and we quickly talked about that earlier, the bill has passed the House, but it does now have to pass the Senate so that for all the public uh, input and the public process that the House has gone through, the Senate needs to repeat that. Um, in, in order for their comfort level and uh, understanding of the legislation to, uh, you know, raise to a higher level. What they wanted, what the Senate wanted, and we agreed, we being the House and um, my committee and our leadership agreed, was to um, go on a tour. And we visited six areas in the state. Uh, made sure that the uh, events were well publicized. Um, the largest event had somewhere near 150 people, mm -hmm. smallest probably 30. And interestingly enough, that was Burlington, uh, was the, mm -hmm. the smallest with attendance. The lake. <laughs> yeah, with the biggest lake and the biggest city in the state. Um, we've heard a lot. I know that at least one member of the uh, Senate Natural Resources and Energy Committee has uh, drafted a somewhat <laughs> different approach uh, toward uh, how this would be implemented and um, uh, we're at least uh, talking with each other uh, about that. Uh, I have no idea where the, the full committee might be when they come out. People were uh, in, in terms of what we heard, people were concerned, well, the legislation says that the agency can write rules. And what people want is some assurance up front about what those rules are going to say. Um, the other thing, I, and I believe this to be true, and this is my perspective, as part of those uh, listening sessions around the state, it turns out that um, uh, Senator Hartwell, uh, uh, um, uh, Senator Snelling, uh, uh, Representative Krebs, uh, and um, Orange County, uh, McDonald, McDonald, Senator McDonald, McDonald, were part of the listening tour and sit on the Legislative Committee for Administrative Rules. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to have a discussion with the people there about, no, 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 the legislature just doesn't throw this out there mm -hmm. and the administration gets to do anything that it wants. They have to come back to us. And here are four members of this listening group commission and they're gonna be sitting looking at what the agency comes up with for rules. Yeah. So uh, there was a level of uh, a trust, uh, 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 an awareness, and mm -hmm. you know, people would come up with the most imaginative "what if" scenarios, mm -hmm. and you know, what if the agency did this or what if the agency did that with rules, and you know, several of us just sort of interrupted and said, "No, no, no, that's not going to happen. So that's not going to happen." You know, why is it peop some people are having problem with protecting our shorelands? Well. Um, the underlying uh, problem is property rights. Yep. And um, uh, we try to be really sensitive to that in the House. Needless to say, our body is generally a more conservative 
uh, body than the Senate because it tends to be more rural um, uh, dominated. Uh, but people couldn't see that in the legislation. They didn't see what we had built in to try and protect against that. So we're hoping that we have one more hearing. It's going to be in Montpelier, January 7th, 8th. We start the 7th, right? We start the 7th. I believe it's January 8th uh, in the evening at the State House, and that will be the 7th uh, public hearing. Our report, our recommendation uh, report, is due January 15th, and we have, in fact, completed a draft. The draft is now published on the legislative website. So if you go to the legislative website, look up in the right-hand corner of the screen, you can click in to see what the draft report says at this point. So that was my summer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I think it's a great example, though, of uh, the democratic process working in the legislature, back out to the general population, now back into the legislature for us to try and... And take more than input. likely, the Senate will pass a different version. Yeah. And um, depending on what's in it, we'll probably end up with a committee of conference uh, over the two versions of the bill that will be a public event also um, and a conference committee can act like any other committee call witnesses get testimony you know whatever um, the chair of uh, the senate committee senator hartwell uh, says it's going to be the first piece of business that his committee is going to take up so hopefully this will be in this mm -hmm. conference committee where we work out the differences between the two versions of the bill early on and if we have to go into the session in order to listen to people we'll we'll do it yeah. I'm sure we will so um, quickly one more question for you sure. David there recently in the news there's there's talk about um, renewing the drive to lower the phosphorus levels in Lake Champlain and other bodies of water in Vermont why, why is that a problem um, as Phosphorus increases, plant growth increases. Phosphorus is a limiting nutrient for Lake Champlain. Nitrogen is a limiting nutrient for the Connecticut River. As plant activity goes wild because of all this extra um, uh, uh, nu nutrients that are feeding the plants, um, you get things like blue-green algae and you get it in such profusion that the water is not usable. St. Albans Bay uh, and other uh, bays in, in the North Lake area, completely unusable fish kills. Um, so it didn't look good. It was dangerous for people to be mm -hmm. in. It was killing uh, the uh, aquatic biota, uh, and we've got to get it down. There's a plan for it. It's called the TMDL. I don't. Don't worry about it. It's a plan to clean up Lake Champlain. We did one uh, six and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. EPA rejected it. Now EPA is working with the state to come up with um, a, uh, a new uh, plan for cleaning up the lake. At the same time, uh, Long Island Sound has a dead spot, just like at the mouth of the Mississippi River. Everybody you know, points over there to Louisiana and whatever. We ha we have a dead zone in Long Island Sound, and That's it's because Connecticut. it's coming from us. It's right? well, it it's not, not exactly all. there, but we are contributing yeah. to it. Yeah. The, the Connecticut River, yeah. and so there's a cleanup plan for Lake Champlain, uh, Lake Champlain, Long Island Sound, that is working its way up the river, if you will, and it will affect Vermont and New Hampshire, and so we need. When we do whatever we're going to do about phosphorus for Champlain, it has to apply to the whole state. And it has to apply to nutrients, not just phosphorus. It, mm -hmm. it, nutrient loading mm -hmm. is the problem. So, and uh, they're out test driving, they being the Agency of Natural Resources and EPA, are out test driving a plan that they think uh, will do the job and trying to get, again, people's reaction. There will be no legislative action on this this year. Mm -hmm. uh, the plan will not be published at least until May, more likely July. Uh, so we will be out of session. But next session, there are going to have to be some legislative changes made 
because in terms of yep. what they're out there talking about. So it'll be in front of us um, next year. Mm -hmm. Or in front of somebody. Yeah. It, well, in front of us, but I meant the I know legislature. What you meant. Yeah. I know, I know. Well, thank, thank you for your ongoing work here, David. Uh, your leadership and uh, being the champion you are for, for clean water and our, our environment. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, thank you. It's work we do for today, but also for the future. Oh, yeah. No, and, it's uh, all about the future. You bet, yeah. Jeanette, um, you're on two committees in the mm -hmm. Senate. Uh, government operations is a committee you chair. Yes. Um, last year you were working on some things around... Um, what were we doing? It's so long ago. <laughs> the, <laughs> yes. our, our committee, some people think it's a kind of a throwaway committee. I think it's probably the most important because what it does is it deals with the foundations of democracy. Yeah. Elections, open government, transparency, um, how the state operates, how the state is um, organized, and um, so if we don't have a good base there, then I think we're lost. So we are work spending some time on um, open meetings, public records. We've been working on that for a long time, and, and I know people say, oh my God, you're doing that again? But it's ongoing, and so we've, we've been looking at exemptions to public records. We've been looking at the what does um, that mean, exemptions? To well, when we have a public records law in Vermont that assumes that everything that government produces, every document that it produces, is public. It's open to inspection and copying by the, by the public, unless it's specifically exempted. So <clears throat> things like your Social Security number is specifically exempted. Your name might not be, except in some circumstances. Um, we had uh, criminal investigations. All the paperwork with that were categorically exempt. They, when they wrote the law, they, there was no ability to get them unless somebody decided to give them out, which they really shouldn't have done because they were exempt. So we changed that last year. So now there's a balancing act. The public's right to, the public's, um, right to know what government is doing and how it's doing weighed against the um, privacy rights of the individual. And, and almost everything we do in that committee is this balancing act between those two things. So we're looking at public records, open meetings. Last year we um, completely rewrote the elections law because we tend to drive town clerks a little crazy by making little tweaks every couple of years. We change them just a little bit and then they get used to them and then we change them again and drive them nuts. So last year we, we took everybody's wish list for elections and did it and now it's in the house. So I'm dogging that because I, I want that to pass. Um, we also deal with um, the Office of Professional Regulation, which is, there. I think there's 45,000 people in Vermont that are licensed, somehow or other landscape architects, uh, dental hygienists, um, dentists, dentists <laughs> you name it. We do not do lawyers and we do not do MDs. We do almost everything else. So I think there are five professions who are, want to come this year and get licensed. Um, I won't even go there, but we ha do have a <coughs> bill that would create a whole new profession, which is um, a dental practitioner. Yeah. And it's kind of a halfway between a dental hygienist and a dentist. And it would require a lot more training than a dental hygienist has. Um, some people support it, some people don't. As you can imagine, there's a lot of turf issues Now, would here. this help? It's there's a problem out there. We, yes. Very, fewer and fewer Vermonters, there's a great number of Vermonters that don't have access to dental yes, care. There's, Would this help address it? Well, I, I hope so. I mean, for one thing, there's too few dentists in yeah. Vermont. And, there's, and the dentists that we have are, um, if you look at uh, the population, many of them are getting ready to retire. Yeah. If, I don't know if they'll sell their practice because I don't know that we can attract new dentists here. So we're working on it from a number of different angles, but the Green Mountain Care Board commissioned a study of access to dental care last year. And so we're looking at that. We're going to try and do this the first week we're up there yeah. and start the hearings on that. <coughs> I, and, and one of the issues is, and health and welfare is going to be looking at this um, same issue. Two of the members on the Government Operations Committee are also on the Health and Welfare Committee. The chair of the Health and Welfare Committee is on the Government Operations yeah. Committee. And they're going to be looking at it too because 
one of the things they're weighing is should dental care be part of of the healthcare. Green Mountain of healthcare in Vermont. Yeah. So um, it, it's a pretty complicated issue, but mm -hmm. I think it's very important, and we're going to start. That's one of the things we're yeah. going to start with. Well, I, thank you. I, I agree. I think uh, the more we learn about our health, we know dental health is integral with with oh, yeah. our overall health, and if we don't have access to that, we're compromising oh, our health. Yeah, very um, much so. There's another bill you have, and and I mention it because the governor has stated before the legislature came back in that he'd like uh, the legislature to look at uh, the current rules we have in regards to mandated treatment for people who are under oh. the care of the Commissioner of Mental <coughs> Health. Um, we um, actually, uh, that bill is not in my committee. Mm -hmm. I'm a sponsor, a right. co-sponsor of it. And it again is a very complicated issue. I, well, if, if the issues we were dealing with were not complicated, we wouldn't need to be there, right? right? They could just be fed into a computer and the answer would be spit out. But there's many levels of it. There's kind of emergency treatment yeah. when, when somebody is um, having some kind of a breakdown and they're violent or whatever. And so there's that level at an emergency. And then there's ongoing treatment. So they're, they're very different. Yeah. And I think sometimes we mix them up. And what we're seeing in our hospitals is that the um, our inability for to have emergency treatment for people is is affecting our hospitals. It's affecting our correction system. Um, the sheriff sometimes sits down at the hospital for two days yeah. watching someone because they can't deputies. get or yeah or so, the sheriff's department yeah. because they can't give them medication. There's no <laughs> bed for them anywhere. And so it's, it's a very complicated issue. And, and again, what this does is um, it's, it's hard to know where you're violating the patient's rights right. and where you're doing mm -hmm. it for their own good or the good of their family or whoever. And right. so, but that is an issue that's going to come up and it will come up. It won't come to government operations, but it will come up to the other committee I'm on, which is ju judiciary. judiciary. Yeah. So it's going to be a health care and judiciary issue. Yeah. And um, yeah, it, it's, um, it's a hard one to deal with. Mm -hmm. it's, um, in my seven years in the legislature, uh, if there's been one issue that I consistently hear from constituents about, this is it, from family members who have somebody suffering from mental health, who go through the cycle of being in treatment, out of treatment, hurting themselves, perhaps hurting others. And uh, it's, it's a challenging thing for families and for individuals. So I it, it is. And in my 11 years there, it is the one issue that I have consistently heard legislators say, I don't want to deal with. Yeah. I, it's a tough it's one. It's because it, it, is, it is really hard to deal with. And um, I don't know exactly where I stand on what will ultimately come out of here, but I in, put my put the bill in to get the conversation started because yeah, I think right. it's time we we face the issue and have the conversation and make some hard decisions yeah. one way or the other. Yeah. So I I know a number of people are a little bit upset with me mm -hmm. for doing that, but um, I, we need to have this conversation. Uh, I, I would agree. Yeah. We've only got a couple minutes left. Uh, I'm excited and ready to get to work as it sounds like you are too. Uh, when we get done, uh, next April, May, usually we get done first, first week of May around there. Um, what would you like, what would you like to, to have accomplished? Oh, everything I proposed to, yeah. have, to be passed and, <laughs> sure. and us to have a lot of money in the state yeah. and have a budget that doesn't do any harm yeah. and, um, have a thriving economy here in Wyndham County. Great. That's not too much to ask. It's it? not. How about you, okay. David? I want to have the shoreland protections uh, in place, uh, or at least the bill passed, and they would take effect upon adoption of the rules, um, and that might take nine months. And I want a dedicated source of revenue for clean water. Yeah. Um, the states around us have made that commitment. We have not. Yeah. You know something? I was at a meeting the other day with um, a bunch of sportsmen. And they, uh, this would come to your committee, I think, or it might go to um, finance. 
or ways and means there, um, proposed putting an additional fee on hunting licenses in order to, when you said dedicated fee, to um, either purchase or, how, or buy the rights or however we do it to wood, I think they're called wildlife management areas. areas. Yep. And that they were saying those are great and we should do Expand more of them. That. And they were proposing, and these, mm -hmm. these were all hunters, yeah. mm -hmm. and they were proposing, put it on our license and yeah. dedicate it to that. Yeah. So put that in your hat. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that, it, it will get at least some time in front of my committee. I yeah. mean, if it deals with it, with it probably hunting. will start in way in the fee bill, right? I, I don't know. Yeah, I I'm don't, proposing don't know. it to the our to our finance committee mm -hmm. yeah. to put it in the fee bill. Well, I, from my perspective on human services, uh, it's going to be another challenging year, uh, especially in regards to the the charge we have to protect those vulnerable Vermont, mm -hmm. Vermonters, the elderly, the disabled, young children. Uh, it's going to be a tough budget year, and, and a lot of the, the increases that we're looking mm -hmm. at are all in the realm of human services. So uh, it's going to be important for us to be able to advocate, to hear from people on, on, on what they want to hear. But I'm, I'm especially concerned that we want to make sure uh, we, we have, a, I believe, a, a social contract to take care of those Vermonters who can't take care of themselves. And I, I look at the disabled, uh, developmentally disabled, the elderly, and especially um, am keen to, to make sure that, that their voices are heard as we, mm -hmm. as we move forward in the next year. Mm -hmm. um, and as we move ahead into what the next... <laughs> What's that? What a team we make. Out there of you district. go. <laughs> there you go. We, we are a team. We work together very well, I think. Yeah. We and do. I, and so people should know that, that we, we do. We meet regularly we um, as a Wyndham County caucus yeah. and um, address issues that are relevant to the county itself. Yep. And we don't always agree but we listen to yeah. Co collectively and, it makes a great and whole. I think we do make I yeah. think we do work well together yeah. mm -hmm. so we'll be heading up to Montpelier in January uh, we'll start mm -hmm. broadcasting our shows from the State House and uh, look forward to reporting to you again uh, hopefully everyone has a, a healthy and safe holiday and a new year we we'll look forward to seeing you again thanks and thanks again to all the people at BCTV for making this possible yes mm -hmm.